This man didn't have to lay out one person. My son break leaves again today. He didn't have to lay out one person, y'all. And know what he said? He treat the employees the way he want to be treated. And that's why I said, I, I, as a CEO, as a person who, if I'm a CEO and I know people in my company that work the low end people especially, I know these people's job is what gets me my millions of dollars. There's no way everybody in that company wouldn't be wouldn't be paid at least a livable wage. At the least, our minimum wage wouldn't exist in my organization. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't. Happy to myself, just me lately. I don't need a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. I've been to myself, just me lately. I don't need a lot. I don't need a lot, no. Just me and the fan, few friends ain't playing. I'll speak a lot. And I, and I, and I can't stop. And I, and I, and I can't stop. Hey, y'all. I want to talk about two things, well, a couple of things, but I just wanted to share this with y'all. Um,. If you're a HR professional or you're a manager or you're a business owner or um, you're a consultant, anything like that, we really need to start stressing the importance of preventing harassment, uh, discrimination, Abuse of pay, and when I say abuse of pay, I mean making your employees work overtime but not paying them for it, things like that. I get this, uh, I get, I have a subscription to the EEOC, and there have been so many claims lately. I think they sued and won three cases, uh, and I think this may have been the Phoenix area or whatever. Y'all, just so many people, listen. I turned down a position. I've talked about this before, but I went to go and interview at this for this position with this company. And the, the interview style was a little different because we sat side by side, side as opposed to facing one another. And he was just asking questions. The, interview, the interviewer was, he was a very nice man, very professional. And, um, but I, I, I am blatantly honest. And I just have to be me. But the question, but what I told him was, I did not want to work for a company who thought the manager was always right. And I knew after I made that statement that I was not going to get the position and I was okay with that because, listen, I know that burnout. You can, you can suffer from burnout if you're working for a company whose uh, morals and standards don't align with yours. I, I just can't work in an area like that because at the end of the day, I won't be able to sleep at, ni at night if people are being mistreated under my watch. I just can't. I, I, I couldn't do it. And so it's best for me to lay that out in the interview process. And that's why I know that the Lord put me in the job I'm in because... I'm the person that makes sure that that doesn't happen, right? And so I know it. I, I know in in any other job, and, and, and if I had to do what I do now, especially like say if I worked in a company where they get new managers and they want yes people, I, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. So, I, 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 I'm definitely where I'm supposed to be because even though sometimes I don't feel like it, I know I make a difference for the employees. I know I do. And some of them may not feel that way. And, and, I, and like I said, I was telling a friend the other day, I understand why. Because I had a girl, she told me one time, she said, and this is not offending. I, I'm not here to offend anyone who's in the HR profession. But this is honestly what she told me. She says she's never, she's never known a person in HR that wasn't low down. I was like, what? 
I said, because I interviewed for a job before. I said, you know what? I say, HR is the Grand Central Station. It's like the hub in any organization. It's almost like your pulse. Because what you allow in that area is going to set the tone for the entire business. Now, I'm not making six figures and stuff, but I guarantee you I didn't save companies more than six figures in lawsuits. Because one thing, you, you're going to be fair and firm as far as I know. Now, the things I don't know, I, I, I can't protect you. If you don't come to me and tell me, I don't know. But if I know it, I'm going to act on what I know. And that's, I know that people are not going to be um, mistreated under my watch. They just aren't. And, and I couldn't work for a company that would allow that. And so, uh, and another thing, if, if, if you're working, if you are hiring HR managers who are yes people and who's going to allow things to happen, like turn a blind eye, your company is going to be in trouble. Every time I see situations, and in fact, in our sexual harassment training, it tells about a case they had in some part of Texas where the manager, oh my God, he was just I mean, textbook discrimination. And the HR manager, I don't think she knew how to handle it or she didn't. Have, I, I don't even remember the specifics. But that company had to pay dearly to that lady. And then they they didn't terminate the guy. They just transferred him to another one of their locations. No, that's just... I was like, wow. So, you know... You got to be... in in a huge human resource managers have to have to have tough skin you have to care you have to have empathy care y'all i'm telling y'all i i don't brag y'all know i'm not like that but what i'm saying is i treat people the way i want to be treated and when you do that i had a girl one time to come i called her to come in to work it was her birthday and i didn't realize it and she said no i'll come in for a few days i was to make that money <laughs> But how you treat people makes a big difference. Y'all remember when, I want to say it might have been 2018 when they were laying all those people off. The economy was in an uproar and companies were shutting down and laying people off and fire and, and just a whole bunch of stuff was going on. I remember CEOs were going to work jobs as uh, waitresses to make money. Y'all, this man didn't have to lay out one person. Son, break leaves again today. He didn't have to lay out one person, y'all. And know what he said? He treat the employees the way he want to be treated. And that's why I said, I, I, as a CEO, as a person who, if I'm a CEO and I know people in my company that work the low end people, especially, I know these people's job is what gets me my millions of dollars. There's no way. Everybody in that company wouldn't be wouldn't be paid at least a livable wage. At the least, our minimum wage wouldn't exist in my organization. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't. So, treat people the way you want to be treated. It's gonna work in your favor. All right, y'all. Let me go. I gotta head to church. I got a meeting, and we got Bible study tonight. I Hey y'all, so here it shows where the EEOC announced that it filed 110 lawsuits challenging unlawful employment discrimination in fiscal year 2014, placing an emphasis on emerging issues and advancing the employment rights of underserved and vulnerable workers. It says litigation is only one tool in the EEOC's toolbox for achieving its mission of preventing and remedying employment discrimination, but it is a tool we will continue to deploy strategically to maximize our impact, said EEOC General Counsel Carlo Gilbride. I am proud of the role our litigation program has played this past year and will play in the years ahead to remove barriers to equal opportunity and make workplaces fairer, safer, and more inclusive. And it says the 100 lawsuits filed for the year end in September the 30th, 2024 include 13 new systemic cases involving a pattern, practice, or policy of discrimination. 48 cases under the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA. Over 40 cases alleging retaliation under various statutes enforced by the EEOC. That number of retaliation is high. So is ADA though. Seven cases under the Age Discrimination and Employment Act, that's the ADA, ADEA, uh, five cases under the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, PWFA, 
that's where you allow your employees to take uh, you know additional breaks and many to sit and everything while they're pregnant five sexual harassment cases on behalf of teenage workers under the title seven under title seven of the civil rights act of 1964 four cases under title seven alleging sex discrimination based on sexual orientation and three cases under title four alleging sex discrimination based on gender identity the best thing to do is to treat everyone fair be fair firm and consistent and then you won't be bothered with the eoc and which is not a bother they just and a lot of times they 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 come in and they make you go through training and everything but anyway i just wanted to share that with you be blessed everybody have a good day bye i feel the love i feel it growing every day i feel the love